This video is going to continue our series of looking at sources from the ancient Roman world found near Pompeii. Today we're going to be looking at sources related to commerce, buying and trading goods. Some of these sources were found buried in the ground, others were found in shipwrecks. So let's have a look. We've mentioned in some of the votive reliefs, merchant ships coming in, especially to the port of Ostia. And here we have a model that's been recreated of what an ancient Roman merchant ship would have looked like. These were sail powered rather than all powered like warships. And the sail power made them much more economical run because you didn't need as many crew on board to feed, etc. Plus with the right wind anyway, you could be a lot faster than, uh, than all powered ship. Uh, plenty lists some of the speed records from Italy. Uh, for example, to Egypt, it took six days. To Cadiz in southern Spain, seven. Uh, to southern France, only three days. And to Africa, two days. They would have held, on average, somewhere between 150 and 350 tons, uh, though they could have been built much, much larger than that. Uh, for example, Egyptian grain ships could carry 1,200 tons of grain. This has been lent to us by the Museo del Navi Romain di Fiumicino. Once these merchant ships came into port and, and took their goods off, uh, often what would happen is they would go onto another riverboat or a corticaria. These were flat bottom transport boats and they ferried goods upriver from Ostia to Rome. Obviously it's a much quicker, easier way of getting a lot of goods across, especially if you've got a very handy river, Tiber taking you there. Most of the merchant ships were too large to make the journey, so they would have gone from Ostia, taken the goods off, and then put them onto these river boats. Uh, roads along both sides of the river allowed the ships to be towed to and from Rome, and this model is based on a ship found in the expanded port of Ostia, which was built by Emperor Claudius. Continuing with commerce from the Camaccio shipwreck, we found a Santusus weight. This weighed about 32 kilos. Basically, it was used when you're weighing up different measurements and selling your cargo. So, you know, you put one on one side of a scale, and then you'd be able to tell how much you're getting. Uh, the stone is, is inscribed, it's got M which is for Magister Navis, which is the ancient Roman way of saying the master of the ship. And this one has the initials TRVF, possibly Titus Rufius or uh, Titus Rufrenius. We're not really sure. You can also see there's two holes on the upper surface of the weight. That's where the handle would have been for the people to pick up and, and put it down again. Here we see two wine and foray. These were found uh, off a reef, the, the Banco Scara, which is off Western Sicily. Basically, ceramic is very, very hard to destroy. So it's often the only way we know that a shipwreck has occurred. The wooden parts of the ship eat away and, and kind of drift off and the ceramic is left over. Wine and foray, because they're indestructible, were used so much in the ancient world. They're basically the ancient world's version of a shipping container. So most ships carried them for grain, for liquids, etc., olive oil, and you just basically stop them up and tar them and they were watertight. We actually literally have some in foray, we know with wine still in them. Uh, larger ships could carry heaps of these things. They were, they were designed and modeled so they could be stacked easily. And some ships could carry 6,000 or more of them. While these M4 a were designed so they could be placed and stacked against each other, they all came in different shapes. And these shapes can indicate to us the different places where they were manufactured. Not necessarily what was in them though. Occasionally you found kind of inscribed commercial information such as uh, this is where the whatever was inside it came from or, or the destination or what was in it. But obviously those inscriptions rarely survive. Uh, the M4A from the wreck of the Camaccio, we can see three different shapes here. And uh, these were found, obviously, one of them came from the Italian Adriatic coast and the others probably from the Greek islands. So there's a few examples of sources related to commerce in the ancient Roman world. Hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure you check out the other videos with a whole range of different sources found in households and other parts of ancient Roman life.